Luna by Zex. Dawn of the first day. 72 hours remain. It was a morning like all of the others. The breeze delightful, grass rustling in the soft, gentle wake, the sun in the sky, and the moon. Something was off about the moon, something sinister and ominous. However, the mind of a child found this to be quite scary in of itself, and hoped it was just something she was hallucinating. As is what most parents tell their kids is what happens when something scary is seen. This morning was different to others, though. This morning, the town was bustling about, in preparation for the festival. Only a young girl, she had been to very few, so she could not count many from recollection, only the age of eight. This year, however, would be different. She wanted to make sure of that. Her assurance would be heeded, but not in the form she intended. Seeming as if completely preoccupied by the preparations, none of the townsfolk seemed to have noticed the moon, nor its fearsome countenance. There was the distant sound of a small Yorkshire terrier barking, perhaps frolicking and playing with some of the other local children. This dog was astray, but had been around for so long that it seemed like the town itself had adopted it. The adults would feed it and their children would play with it, and all would be well. The day was slow, and all that happened was bumping into a few construction workers, feeding a couple of rogue cuckoos, and the old woman from the shop not too far from her home seemed to be troubled with something. Night of the first day. Fifty hours remain. A few hours before her mother rushed the young girl to bed, she caught snippets of eavesdropped conversation, information which the young girl believed to be news of the moon cycling. The adults said something about the moon's tears falling down from upon clock town, but she didn't comprehend anything more than that. Before it got too late though, she had been called home by her mother, ruining any chances of learning new information. The last thing she thought of was what made the moon cry, but thoughts of the moon, its face, and its tears faded from her mind as sleep overtook her, and what she found there made an uneasy feeling crawl down her spine. What she experienced in the dream was not by any means pleasant. A man in a cowl, bearing a bag filled with items of ambiguity, trekking through what seemed to her to be Clock Town. He gave off the air of a thief, a murderer, or some other classification of criminal, and his actions solidified that assumption. As he darted through what she believed to be South Clock Town, a small repetition of barks came from behind the figure. It was the town's stray, attempting to send away the criminal. As she began to recover from his sleep, the dream faded to black. A slight snap reverberated in her eyes before she sprung up from her laying position, beginning to cry. Dawn of the second day. 42 hours remain. She had kept her dreams secret from her mother, because she knew that they would simply be dismissed as nothing. That she had been reading too many scary stories before bed. After she wiped the tears from her cheeks, she dressed and headed out to see what was going on in the town. All around, hushed whispers amongst the construction workers piqued her interest, susurrant tales of South Clock Town, after a bombing threat in the middle of the night, that the criminal was apprehended only after the act was successfully carried out. In the wake of the attack, the town guard had been ordered to close off the area, and close all entrances and exits to Clock Town, so it would not happen again. However, news of a bombing was not on the top of the list of what made a chill run down her spine. It was the moon. It looked bigger. Not only did it appear larger in scale, but his grin looked wider, almost malicious. Here and there, people began to notice how close the moon was and started to become concerned. However, no action was taken yet, as none of the adults in the town saw the moon traveling close to the planet as much of a threat to do something about it or at least the ones who did, were immediately reassured that it was nothing to worry about. The stray that normally occupied South Clock Town was not there anymore, and she found that its absence somehow affected the workers, who acted a little more melancholy than usual. There was a child though, off in the corner, one who would play with the dog. He was huddled into a ball, and he looked to be crying. Night of the second day. Thirty hours remain. She turned in early that night, but found her dreams were a little more disturbing than the night before. A lonely room with a chair and a letter on the bed, the feeling of hopelessness filling the air. 
This dream would end up much shorter than the last, but before the child woke, she saw the nameless woman step up on the chair and fit some sort of necklace around her neck, and then step off of the chair. The child woke in a cold sweat, feeling a sort of frightened feeling tugging at her consciousness, as if she were in danger, as if something was watching her. Dawn of the final day, 24 hours remain. Everything was rushed. Everyone seemed to be sprinting to their destinations. The festival was to begin tomorrow, so was this justified? The moon had gotten so close it took up the entirety of the sky. Its blood red and baleful yellow eyes glared down at Clock Town, its contorted grin seeming to make it look angry. Vindictive. Her parents decided they would evacuate the town that night, as the rest of the city was slated to do. By nightfall, the town was going to be deserted. Still, tidings from the night before found its way into the small girl's ears, even if everyone was hustling and bustling about. According to them, the rich woman living at the local inn had hung herself. Nobody knew why, or at least did not voice the account, but it was assumed by the adults that she was too lonely to live another day, or that something drove her insane. The only explanation as to what would have been the strange occurrence around town, which would lead to various suicides around town later that day. Night of the final day. Twelve hours remain. She had still felt eyes on her all day. Not the moon's, but someone else's. Someone much more mendacious. She had been left behind by her parents and everyone else in Clock Town when she had jumped off of the carriage to retrieve her teddy bear. When she had gotten it, the carriages were nowhere in sight. They had left her here. She was all alone in an empty town. The sky darkened, doors locked, the moon seeming to laugh at her plight. It was well after nightfall, closing in on midnight, and the moon looked as if it was making it more obvious approach than before. Just then, the clock tower changed. The ball atop the tower dropped, and the face of the clock was moved skyward. It was very loud, and it made her flinch. But this was not the only noise or movement. There seemed to be a staircase forming on the tower, perhaps leading up to the top. Since she thought there might be someone up there, she decided to climb to the top and see. Before she made it to the top, she heard a loud, echoing scream that shook her to the bone, but the silence that followed made her even more frightened, and made her want to be with her family even more. As the climbed to the clock's face, she saw a strange child, simply floating a few feet from the surface, a mask on his face. The mask he wore had eyes that felt like the eyes she suspected were watching her earlier that day, and the eyes that she believed had a hand in all of the strange happenings in town within the last 72 hours. I'm glad you could join me, Luna. It was the last thing she heard before the impact. That was Luna. Final thoughts? Decent buildup with no substance. This one really disappointed me. The entire story seemed like it was going somewhere, but it never amounted to anything. It just talked about the town for three days, had dreams that never actually amounted to anything in the end, Luna ends up in the town that night due to plot convenience, and the moon crashes. It's basically just what would have happened if you took Link out of Majora's Mask, added a woman hanging herself for no explained reason, and have a little girl get hit by the moon. The story also has a really bad case of high school English assignment squeezing for extra credit syndrome, where the author heavily relies on a thesaurus for replacement words. Although a thesaurus can help spice up some lines and make repetition less obvious, it really doesn't work because the replacement words aren't perfect replacements, so it just sounds like fancy words for the sake of fancy at words, and a common form of pretension. It also falls especially flat when the words they use aren't spelled correctly. It's mendacious with an E, not mendacious with an I. That's it for this week's Creepypasta. Tune in again next week when we tackle yet another story made and sent in by the fans with BAM. If you want to write your own story, help peer edit a story, or even just read the stories early, check out the description where you'll find a link to the Creepypasta section of my forum. You'll also find the link to the playlist of every creepypasta reading I've done. Remember that if you want your story to be read on the show, you must stay active on your post on the forum as well as read the forum rules. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, sweet dreams.